On line now, I've got a lady who is uh, still working very, very hard for the Irish community. She uh, hails from County Clare, Chief Officer of the Luton Irish Forum. It's uh, Nolette Handley. Nolette, lovely to talk to you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks very much, Jerry. and yourself? Yes, going uh, going well and uh, uh, busy in these uh, strange, strange times. Now, you're the uh, Chief uh, Officer of the uh, the Luton Irish Forum. Uh, tell us, uh, basically, about the Luton Irish Forum. What do you do? Right, well, the, the Forum was set up 22 years ago by, um, to create a voice for the Irish community in Luton. And um, since uh, over the last 20 years, it has extended its service to provide welfare, social, cultural and volunteer opportunities for not only the Irish community, but the community at large. Um, we've got a, a well-known welfare service um, where we provide welfare benefits and accommodation advice, um, uh, help people with getting Irish passports. We have social activities, so we um, we provide serv- um, social activities to um, babies right through to the 90s, um, and uh, we include a range of classes um, such as calligraphy, art, um, tea and chat, bingo, um, so there's a range of 13, so something for everybody. Uh, we have a befriending service, and um, we also uh, have a cultural uh, program, including the annual St. Patrick's Festival, which has been going 20 years, um, the St. Bridget's Day, after the pa- patron saint, um, uh, St. Bridget's. And uh, we have a pipe band, and we provide cultural uh, workshops at schools and out in the community. Right. Plenty, uh, plenty to uh, to offer there. And uh, yeah. tell me, how, 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 what are the things that that, that most people are uh, so aware of the Luton Irish Forum is? Uh, your involvement in the uh, St Patrick's Festival, which happens each year. Yes. Yeah, so, um, a group of volunteers uh, first came up with the idea to have a parade in the town centre, and the first one was held in um, in the millennium year. And um, since then, it has grown. Um, it was basically a way of um, promoting Irish culture and getting kind of spreading that sense of pride amongst the wider community. And um, it has uh, gone from strength to strength to this year. Um, We had um, an extra stage plan. So in in addition to the main stage in Market Hill, um, the mall stage in um, the mall shopping centre and the family market and the parade, we had... um, a new addition, which was um, the Hat Factory stage, which was going to be held in the renovated um, Hat Factory, which is part of um, Newton Museums. Um, and also, in addition to St. Patrick's Day itself, then there are St. Patrick's um, Parade Day itself, we have an event on St. Patrick's Day, and that was to be held in um, the Celtic Club. And um, also uh, a couple of showings of theatre, um, Irish drama, um, in the local library theatre. Right, plenty. Uh, there was plenty going on. I, I you know, I was yeah. uh, to be part of it, as you know, on the Absolutely. on the uh, on the main stage. It was uh, it was uh, it was certainly a, a very uncertain time at then, and uh, uh, the the unfortunately, like with all the efforts that had gone into it, the that the whole lot had to be cancelled owing to uh, the uh, COVID emergency. That's right. I mean, it was it was difficult because the restrictions were a lot different to what they were in Ireland Um, and we had um, the green light uh, so to speak from uh, the Irish Embassy um, and also from public health um, all week and then um, when the schools uh, in Ireland uh, decided to close at short notice on Thursday public opinion changed and um, it was clear that you know the festival being cancelled would was inevitable so we as soon as we were able to uh, draw together the committee on the Friday um, which is unfortunately so late in the day um, we we um, cancelled it um, and uh, yeah the, the word spread very quickly I think we had about 40,000 people um, uh, connect with the message on Facebook and um, of course lots of show, uh, support um, but the general and overwhelming feeling was it was the right decision and uh, people were very much looking forward to the next year. 
Indeed so, indeed so. It's uh, it was it was one of the you know it was it was something which uh, you know was a, a real shame. But uh, the you know the issue where uh, lives are at risk, uh, you know, has got to take the uh, uh, you know take precedence as, as it was in in this situation. Yes, absolutely. I mean the the health of the, the public was um, paramount. Um, I think, unfortunately, because there wasn't the guide, the guidance wasn't there, and I suppose the approach was so different to that in Ireland, it left us in a bit of a quandary during the week. But um, you know, I think I, I I do think the right decision was taken, and um, I think what it means is that people are more looking forward to next year than they would have been under normal circumstances. Indeed, so. Yes. Tell me, how are you getting on yourselves uh, as in the lockdown? I mean, are you how are you, are you able to supply some of the services that you normally do? Yes, we've managed to um, change how we work. Um, quite surprisingly, um, if we had done a plan, I wouldn't have imagined we'd have managed it. But um, they are kind of flagship services, our welfare service, and we've managed to make that available on the phone line. Um, it's something we've begun to do um, in the last couple of years um, because it's not necessary it's not, um, to always bring in um, somebody to have their welfare problem dealt with if you can assist them over the phone. So it was um, kind of in line with the way the service had been developed um, or developing. We unfortunately had to cancel um the clubs, um, so we've 13 social clubs, um, and uh, we managed to move six of those online, um, and they meet via Zoom, um, which has been quite effective, um, um, but we haven't managed to do that for all the activities, so there's some, such as our bingo um, sessions, um, that haven't you know, managed to run, um, or St. Patrick's planning really has um, would normally be in full slow by now so we've actually um, decided we will um, hold back until things are a bit more clear um, and we start kind of having conversations in, um, in you know in the autumn about the future of the St. Patrick's Festival um, but yeah most um, most activities have been able to kind of run we've what we have done is we've extended our befriending service so we have um, a volunteer who is speaking to 50 different people um, a week. We have, uh, we're supporting 51 people with shopping um, service, so um, getting essential items, particularly for those who are vulnerable or who are shielding, and um, their their essential items are being brought to their home, and um, that includes um, any pharma- pharmaceutical items as well. Um and we are also, um, we have a COVID special newsletter that we have been um, creating and, and sending out once a month as well, which has some puzzles and some um, health, uh, some physical and, and um, brain sort of training activities um, to keep people engaged. Yeah. Sounding good, excellent, uh, excellent stuff indeed. It's uh, it, it's incredible. Uh, must do at times as a great master in situations like this. Yes. Uh, listen, you've uh, you've recently received an uh, an award, prestigious award for uh, for all your uh, your great work. Can you tell us about that, Nolet? Yeah, so um, we were delighted to hear on um, the, the, that uh, we were successful, or our volunteers were successful with winning the Queen's Award, which recognises the outstanding contributions that groups of volunteers make to local communities. Um, it's a bit like an MBE for volunteers, and um, we were one of uh, 230 to win nationally. Um, the Lord of Luton, Lord Mackenzie, um, nominated us, and uh, we were vetted by a, a QAVS panel and um, had to have a couple of uh, letters of support from um, community representatives. And yeah, the, it was about a six month process. And uh, we were just we were delighted um, that the volunteers were recognised, and um, even though there's 230 nationally, there's only four in Bedfordshire, so it does make it quite special. Um, the accolade. Indeed, so that is a tremendous achievement, you know, and I think it's a it's a credit to yourself and everybody else, the team involved with the uh, uh, the forum to uh, you know to to receive that, and uh, it just shows the you know the, the the amount of work you're doing and the good work that you're doing in the community. 
Oh, thank you. Uh, well, we're we're absolutely delighted. Um, the only unfortunate part of it is that um, it would come in ha- hand in hand with a, a big kind of uh, an event, <laughs> and uh, we haven't been able to go ahead and plan that. Um, but it just gives us a little bo- bit more time for planning. So. Um, uh, for for an event hopefully next year, and um, at, at that, um, the Lord Lieutenant of Bedfordshire, Helen Nellis, who's the Queen's representative in Bedfordshire, will come and present the volunteers the award. So it's um, we've a lot to look forward to and um, when o- reopening. Indeed, so indeed, so. Uh, but uh, you 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 you're still continuing all the hard work and doing the best you can. You know, you've outlined a lot of a lot of great work that you've been doing in this uh, uh, you know lockdown period and uh, health crisis. So uh, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, well done to you all in uh, in doing it and getting having it uh, all going uh, as as good as you have. Thank you. No, that's that's greatly appreciated. The staff and volunteers have been phenomenal. They've um, they've had very little time off. Um, they've kind of um, gone, given above and beyond what has been expected of them. Um, I think, you know, it, it, they've been a credit um, to the, the Irish community and to the broader community that we serve. So um, they have my greatest appreciation and the appreciation of the board. Um, yeah, so it's it's fantastic, really. Indeed so, indeed so. Uh, I think it's crucial at times like this, you know, when you've got, a, a, you know, an emergency like this, that uh, uh, people like you step up to the plate because there are people who uh, really value and are in need of your services. Well, yes, I mean, it just it shows the importance of the service and I think there is nothing like a crisis um, to even kind of reevaluate that and kind of reaffirm that that you know the services are so vital and um they will be you know for the future a continued need um if it's anything we're expecting uh, an increased need and we're planning for that so we're currently increasing our um capacity to deal with more welfare inquiries as um lockdown lifts as um unfortunately redundancies increase and um um, people's, you know, financial stability becomes less um, comfortable. Um, so we're we're gearing up for that at the moment. Well done, well done indeed. Uh, the uh, the future, can, um, you know, for many people uh, is uncertain. And uh, you know, well done to yourselves on uh, doing that. You certainly will have, uh, you know, plenty of assistance uh, and plenty of people requiring assistance. I think in the uh, in the future. No, let listen. It's been lovely to speak to you. Lovely to catch up with you. Uh, congratulations on your uh, award and well done on everything that you do uh, with the. Thank uh, you. It's absolutely fantastic. Lovely to speak to you again. And you, Jerry. Thanks very much, and uh, stay safe. And look forward to seeing you um, at St Patrick's next year. Fingers crossed on it all, Nolette. Thank you indeed. <laughs> okay, take care. Thank you.